Hello, I'm Nyoko, and welcome back to year 15 of Galaxy Clan. As always, the Galaxy Clan playlist is linked below. And this year is a lot of new stuff for the clan in general. We moved territories into the mountains, and I made a short generator of some possible events that could happen over the moon of traveling, and I made an animatic of the highlights. So imagine this next stuff happens over the course of a moon in-game. Side note, if you check out the generator below, there are some events that are semi-common to appear, but... I only really counted the first outcome of each of them that appeared, so it's more story related, so if you get the same thing over and over, that's why. But with that said, I started with the cats right before leaving, so let's hop in with what happened. Blaze Hair of Bug Clan had come to say goodbye, ruffling Beetle Bite's fur and saying that she's going to miss him and to remember that he carries Bug Clan blood with him. Beetle Bite saying goodbye to his grandma. Meanwhile, Flame Bear and Lightning Flight were both looking exhausted and a bit worried as they were saying their own goodbyes. Their dad, Thunder Spirit, looked up from the pile of his grandkits and decided that he was coming with them, to the surprise of his kits. Holostar was holding a strategy meeting with his deputy and the two messengers from the mountains on how the traveling should go and how to navigate the obstacles ahead. Cloud J got distracted as he heard a shout. Stagpaw had arrived back and Yeropatch was loudly exclaiming in happiness. Cloud J ran over to his son and commented on how big he's gotten. Stagpaw said that he's finally made it home and he's happy to see him again. Yero Patch popping in, gl happily saying that their dad's deputy now. Holostar walked over and asked if Stagpod had heard from Flaxroar at all, but unfortunately he didn't. Holostar tries to hide his disappointment and turns to the rest of the clan, announcing Stagpaw's return and saying that the journey will begin soon, leaving Stagpaw really confused, having to quickly get caught up with what happened. Later, as the journey was beginning, the clan was doing their best taking care of each other. Throughout the journey, they were supporting their elders and the kits. Lightning Flight's litter was handled mostly by her family. Surprisingly, Hope Fern helped a few times as well, but she glared daggers at Lightning Flight at every chance. During a time when the clan was crossing a narrow ridge, a young eagle tried to grab Yarrow Patch, but was chased off by Branch Deer, who did get injured in the process. And during one of the nights after that, Hope Fern and Branch Deer were arguing away from the other cats during which the ground below Hope Fern crumbled and she began to fall, trying desperately to grab the cliff without claws to help her. Branch Deer pulled her up, wincing as she clung to him and his injured shoulder, both silent in shock after she was pulled up, the argument forgotten. At one point, a landslide occurred and Hill Fuzz was able to grab and save Fuzzy Kit before the debris could crush him. Snow brought the kit to his mother and quickly called the cats to action in rescuing the two cats that ended up buried. With Hillfuzz's guidance, Sleek Clove was saved, hacking up dirt but alive. Unfortunately, Whispery's had not been so lucky. Her family grieved her death and a vigil was held that day before the clan was forced to continue moving. Later on the journey, Snakepaw stopped to stare at a specific crevice that seemed to be calling to him. To his surprise, a snake lunged out and bit him, quickly slithering away afterwards. Flame Bear stood staring frightened for a bit before Ragged yelled at him to go help Beetle Bite save the young cat giving detailed instructions on how to deal with snake bites. Luckily, the clan was close to their destination, and Snakepaw was able to be fixed up enough to continue traveling with the support of others. The clan ran into a patrol of cats who gasped at the group, Hilfuzz walking forward, greeting the cats from what was once Fuzz's old clan, Moss Clan, and announcing the prophesized fourth clan has finally been guided home. Hilfuzz proudly introduces Hollowstar and asks the patrol to tell the rest of the clan that Galaxy Clan has arrived. Bidding farewell and leading the clan to their new home, that they have traveled so far for. The clan gasped with surprise at the beauty of the cave and sparkling stones. Some more Star Clan connected cats could feel the comforting presence of cats around them, both old loved ones and cats of long past times. Cinderpetal smiled in relief at making it to the clan's new home. As moons went by, he still smiled at the clan fitting in. There were struggles, but that's life. He's learned a lot. As he looked out, Stoneleaf joined him, commenting on how it's been a while. Cinderpetal smiling, saying it really has. Looking over to his other side, seeing Ravenspot, who told his brother that it was finally time to rest. Squirrelpaw and Aspen Lily came over, chuckling that it took him long enough to join them. Frogdapple came over and embraced him, making him feel like a kid again. Whiskerheart walked by, saying that she's proud of the cat that he had become. Cinderpetal saying that she trained him well. Burdock Star commented that the clan is in a brand new era, and Sandstar sadly smiled, saying that he's proud of the clan. But now it's time for us founders to rest. Cinderpetal walked away to Star Clan, leaving his body behind smiling. And with that, we begin the Star Clan section. As you saw, Whispreeze died on the journey at 68 moons old when she was buried in a landslide. She was sadly the only cat to die on the journey itself, but there was a decent amount of possible deaths. 
Some may or may not have included a mountain lion, so the clan honestly kind of lucked out. But I'm still really sad to see Whispery's go. I imagine she had been mostly making sure that her dad's cinder petal was okay during the journey. Speaking of, I had free options for cinder petal's outcome in the journey in the generator. Uh, either dying before they left, dying as soon as they got there, or surviving the journey. This mad lad survived the journey itself, but sadly he did die a few moons later, when he passed away peacefully at the age of 176. Our last clan founder has officially passed on, and I was getting a little emotional drawing the old clan founders in the animatic coming to guide him home. This truly is the beginning of a new era for the clan. With that said, though, we must move on, so on to the other cats in Star Clan. Lightning Flight died at 44 moons old, and she was straight up murdered, and I don't think it's a mystery of who did it. We'll get into more details later, but Hope Fern pushed Lightning Flight off a cliff in the beginning of Leaf Bear. Hope Fern had so much hate for Lightning Flight, and she didn't deserve this. Lightning Flight has only ever wanted to live a peaceful life with her family, but sadly she couldn't. Ignoring the murder part, Lightning was doing her best this year. Meringue had offered advice with the kids, and she actually ended up getting one of her own kits as an apprentice. And I usually change that, but I let it happen this time because I thought it might be comforting for her. Sadly, she never got to see any of her kits become warriors. Lightning Flight's death hurts me. Moving on, though. Next up is unfortunately Rain Dapple, who died at 46 moons old. She had gotten hit on a monster on the Thunderpath, perhaps being less cautious than she should have been due to the mountainous Thunderpaths being less busy than the old forest ones. He was actually hit right in front of his apprentice, so that was horrible. Rain Dapple did end up getting one of her brother's kits as an apprentice, like I was hoping. And while they were still kits, she actually had the status of watching the kits to make sure none of them accidentally hurt each other. And my heart is in pain. Rain Dapple was doing her best trying to be good for Prickleflex kits in his absence. And with Rain Dapple gone, all of specifically Dark Whistle and Lightfoot's kits together are dead, and that's depressing. But on to the last death of this year. It's sadly a new face, and this always sucks. Meet the baby-faced 103 moon old Flip Dusk. She was charismatic and a great mediator. She was brought to the clan after an apprentice and their mentor found her injured on their first patrol. She used to be a loner until another cat chased her from her home. She did her best to fit in, but she was caught breaking the code on the same moon that she had the status of seeing a strange two-leg object, so I think she had been eating two-leg food. But Flip Dusk won my heart and made me very sad with her death. Blood warning for a picture, I'll let you know when it's gone. Flip Dusk was killed after she sacrificed herself for the young warrior Gold Dazzle in battle with Viper Clan. And the picture is gone. Flip Dusk died a hero and I'm sad. Also, Galaxy Clan and Viper Clan both went to war with each other in their separate games. If you saw the stream, then you knew that Viper Clan went to war with Galaxy Clan, but Galaxy Clan did go to war with Viper Clan too. <laughs> so it happened on both sides. And if you did see the stream, you'll know that the war is over on Viper Clan's side, but. Galaxy Clan's game will always have the priority with canon, and as of the end of this year, we're still at war. But yeah, here's Flip Dusk. I wish we got to know her more, but year 15 only had five deaths. Side note, I made the max clan size before I personally do something myself. Five cats more, so that helped a bit. But on to our living cats. Starting with Hollowstar, who is 86 moons old and still has eight lives. Congratulations. Along with no new scars. It seems he's really trying hard to prove himself a good leader this year. The journey went relatively smooth, and he was relying a lot on Hillfuzz and Ragged to help the clan adapt to the mountains and give them tips. Side note, didn't draw it in the animatic, but Hillfuzz was basically Holostar seeing Eye Cat during the journey, and Holostar actually does have a crush on Hillfuzz now, so it's no longer one-sided. Holostar took a bit to adapt to the new territory, but he's doing his best to be strong for his clan. His blindness made learning the new territory a struggle. He feels comfort in being such a Star Clan blessed home and has been trying to listen to his medicine cats and mediators more, as well as trying to be welcoming to new cats, hoping that he left the dark forest behind him. He does still come off as intimidating and he was furious at the declaration of war and knows a full on battle isn't wise right now, but Viper Clan has crossed the line with the murder of Flip Dusk. He was upset about Lightning Flight's murder and slashed at Hope for an punishment which shook up the clan a bit, but there's more to that later. On a less upsetting note, he also returned two kits to Moss Clan, and I thought that was cute. Overall, it seems that Holostar is mostly trying to maintain the peace, but is struggling. 
He's not sure if he's making the right decisions, but he's trying to improve upon what he's done in the past. But on to the deputy. Cloud J is now 95 moons old, and he's actually mates now with the 112 moon old Ragged after Ragged confessed his feelings. Relationship-wise, they've been cute, and Ragged actually seems to have been looking after and trying to get to know Cloud J's kits more, even saving Yarrow Patch from a fox at one point. They got together recently, so we'll have to see how it goes relationship-wise, but for now, let's talk about Cloud J specifically for a bit. He got bit by a fox when he was trying to scavenge some prey, so he has a new scar. But in general, he's been trying to keep the clan ready and prepared for battle in this war that they're in, assessing their physical strength and readiness for frets. The moon before accepting Ragged as his mate, he also wanted to speak to Dark Whistle, so I think he seeked the mediator's advice. Cloud J also does not trust the specific warrior that's in the clan at all this year, but we'll say who that is later. On Ragged's end, he actually almost drowned at one point, getting saved by another cat. And tension-wise, it's a bit thick with some clan mates, with the whole Viper Clan war going on, considering that he was once a Viper Clan cat, and it was revealed that his older brother is currently the leader. Speaking of that, Ragged had the status that he was lingering on the Viper Clan border waiting for a specific cat on the same moon that the war started. So we'll have to see how things go, whether he was trying to prevent the war or he might have had more sinister stuff to him. Hoping he's a good guy for the sake of Cloud J, but we'll have to see what happens next year if anything proves otherwise. On to our medicine cats now. Starting with the 47 moon old flame bear along with his new mate, the 47 moon old sleek clove. Sleek clove asked out flame bear and he accepted, so yay. Flame bear has been pretty stressed this year and sleek clove helps him relax a bit, having a water fight at one point. On flame bear's side of the year, he has no idea what the true meaning of the snake omens are at this point, and he feels haunted by anything snake related. He was nicer to Snake Paw after the snake bite incident, but he's so concerned with the Viper Clan war and is very suspicious of both Ragged and Hilfa's. Ragged more so, but he's been eavesdropping on both of them and doesn't like that they seem to be cozying up to the positions of power in the clan. Flame Bear convinced Holostar that he should give other cats apprentices when he was asked if they would make good mentors. On Sleek Club's side, this poor man, I swear, injury-wise, he got buried in a landslide on the journey, dislocated his leg, and got a bellyache after being dared to eat a bug, which I fully believe he only did to have an excuse to flirt with Flame Bear. Despite his bad luck, he really thinks he's invincible, daydreaming about being a warrior in Tiger Clan and walking along the edge of a very tall cliff. Sleek Clove, honey, you're lucky you're married to a doctor now? Please be careful. Despite all this, Sleek Clove managed to single-handedly save three cats from drowning on a patrol when crossing a river had gone bad without even thinking of his own safety. He saved Ragged, Fernheart, and Goldpaw collapsing from exhaustion afterwards, and I'm so proud of him. After becoming mates with Flame Bear, he also decided to wear some cute blueberries. And I play ahead two moons in case a gay couple decides they want to adopt newborn kits in game because I say those are with the help of a surrogate or a donor. So theoretically, they should know about it if it's two moons earlier. So I'll say right now that these two have a surrogate outside the clan named Cricket, who I'm not drawing, but I will put up on screen. And she is expecting for them, so you'll see that next year. These two are going to be dads. And speaking of dads, the 39 moon old Beetle Bite is next, who stayed a medicine cat, and he has kits with Stone Fawn right now. They're biologically Beetle and Stone's kits, but Lizard Snap is just as much a parent as they are, and the Polycule are all parenting the kits together. One of the kits reminds Beetle Bite a lot of his younger self, so he's trying to get him to grow out of his bullying habits sooner rather than later. Earlier in the year, while on patrol with Stone Fawn, Beetle Bite felt a presence join them and called his mate over saying that his mother was visiting them. I like to think that Swanleaf specifically has been watching him since she did train him from Star Clan. And I did check and Swanleaf did actually have the status that she was proud of Stone Fawn that moon, so it was nice to see her approving of the relationship in game. Beetle Bite also collected Tansy with his bestie Lizard Snap, and they share their dislike for a certain cat and clan right now. Beyond his mate, Beetlebite's been doing his best reciting the names of herbs and adjusting to the new territory. He's still got his insecurities, but he's doing a lot better this year. He's also getting along great with the newest fully named Medcat, the now 25 moon old Snake Eye, who is charismatic, fairly clairvoyant, and a good fighter. He had a tough rest of his apprenticeship, getting bit by a snake on the journey, just being the start of it. 
He's very grateful for Ragged in particular. He then later fell out of a tree when trying to grab Elder Leaves, luckily not gaining any permanent damage from it. But on another patrol, he slipped in mud, drenching the entire Medicine Cat patrol. Luckily, by the time he gained his full name, it was said that his charming attitude does as much for his patients as his skills do. He's also the medicine cat that I imagine enjoys the new half moon meeting situation here. If you miss the streams, each clan has their own place to talk to Star Clan. Galaxy Clan is basically living in there, so half moon meetings are less about speaking to Star Clan and more about a rotating sleepover of sorts for the medicine cats where they catch up with each other and see how they can help. Each moon, the meeting will take place at a different clan, and Snake Eye finds this fun. He really seems to look out for the most vulnerable clanmates, such as checking in on elders and teaching kids what plants to stay away from. He really seems to be shining now that he has his full name. Now onto our mediator. Dark Whistle is 92 moons old and is once again the only mediator after Hope Fern was stripped of her role. He's very disappointed and frankly angry at her. Earlier in the year when the war wasn't as bad, they attempted to negotiate with Viper Clan, but Dark Whistle was upset at how Hope Fern made things worse. Leading to the point they actually had to run away and Dark Whistle swiped a Viper Clan cat in defense. For live stream watchers, this is how Ochre Fern of Viper Clan got their claw wound. Beyond that, Dark Whistle helped cats with their crushes this year and successfully settled hunting disputes with Moss Clan as our cats kept crossing or almost crossing their borders this year. He's been worried about his mom and is very upset at his siblings for causing her so much stress, giving advice to them showing his disappointment. Also, side note, Galaxy Clan brought the idea of mediators to these clans, and since then, there's only been one elder in another clan who said they wanted to be one, but they immediately got taken away by two legs, so it's kind of up in the air about how the new neighbors actually feel about the mediator role. I feel like Viper Clan in particular probably doesn't respect them, but we'll have to see. Now onto our warriors. Starting with Fernheart, who is 114 moons old, and she is tired. Just let her rest, game. She's just always trying to be nice, warning Moss Clan of a badger, and she is rewarded with pain every time, I swear. She almost drowned this year, her daughter killed a cat, so now two of her kits are killers. An apprentice gave her attitude on the same moon that Fernheart wished her kindness was this was reciprocated more. I feel so bad. She really just seems like she's slowing down a lot this year and is overall defeated and I think it's probably time for her to retire at this point. I said that last year but it's time. Most of her family just wants her to rest. Sad to say but that's really it for Fernheart. She's just kind of numb. Next up is the 95 moon old Hilfas. Hilfuzz, funnily enough, had a couple interactions with Fuzzy Kit specifically, saving him in the generator and then also catching the kit when he was climbing too high. Hilfuzz was also telling the kits stories again this year, so I think Fuzz really likes kits. Meringue also gave Fuzz feathers to wear, so that's fun. As mentioned earlier, Flame Bear is a little suspicious of Snow, but Hilfuzz hasn't done too much to be honest, beyond worming Snow's way into becoming pretty close to Holostar. As mentioned earlier, the crush is reciprocated now, and on Hilfuzz's end, it's pretty big now. Beyond that, Hilfuzz basically has been making sure the clan settles in to their new home. Snow's been trying to tag along on a lot of patrols that Hollow Star goes on. But onto a new face. Meet the 87 Moon Old Kale. He's loyal and eloquent speaker and very clever. But he left Galaxy Clan with a bad first impression. Very small blood warning for a picture. A patrol had saved him from a dog, but when Thunder Spirit went to go help him, Kale had swiped out in defense, thinking that he was still in danger, and ran off. And the pick is gone. He ended up joining the clan the next moon, sheepishly smiling and saying that he was sorry. Interestingly, Kale actually developed a crush on Thunder Spirit later, which is one-sided, but I think that's kind of hilarious. I don't know if that's gonna go anywhere, I just think it's funny that he accidentally swiped at him, and now he has a crush. Interestingly, Kale was seen touching noses with a kitty pet this year, and when playing Viper Clan, they actually stole the kits of a kitty pet named Crumpet, who unfortunately later died, but she has the same boot pattern as Kale, so I think that might have been his younger sister, which is unfortunate because I did just say she died and Viper Clan has her kits. Um, beyond that, Kale went hunting with Holostar a few times and seems to be fitting into the clan well. I hope to see more of him, I really like his design. And next up is a fun face to see because Flax Roar somehow made it to the clan. She's 86 moons old and her making it here means that she made the mountainous journey alone and found everyone. I'm so proud of her. 
She was so happy to see her brother again, but was taken aback as she was brought up to speed with everything that she missed. She's very nervous and she's trying to fit back in. And to be honest, she's had a horrible return and I feel really bad. She was on a patrol where they saw a two leg trying to throw a cat that was in a bag into a lake and she tried to save them, but the two leg kicked her really hard into a tree. Holostar called her a treat immediately and him and Ragged helped her back to camp. But this poor girl, please have a good year next year. I'm happy she's at least back. I was so sad she was just gonna die being lost and that would just be so sad. Moving on to the 84 moon old Thunder Spirit. I edited him in as compassionate because his previous personality type, altruistic, apparently got merged into that. He's also an eloquent speaker. He joined Galaxy Clan when they moved so he could be with his remaining children and new grandkids. He's fought about his old clanmates, but for a reminder, the main kin that he left behind in Cree clan was his brother Starling Poppy, who murdered their former leader Kestrel Star, so I can see why he might have decided to join. He's helped a lot with the kits and spoke with Hope Fern before the incident about how she's treating his daughter unfairly. He was not happy with her. Kale gave him a scar on his ear, and Thunder Spirit is a little annoyed at the fact that he joined the clan later, having a very small dislike for him, which contrasts Kale's crush. Interestingly, Thunder Spirit has a crush on Fernheart and Flaxroar, neither of which I think are emotionally stable enough right now, but I think he knows that. Thunder Spirit feels helpless after Lightning Flight was murdered, and has been thinking that his kindness might be taking advantage of. I'm so sad he already lost another kit. Next up is Branch Deer, who is 52 moons old now. Him and Hope Fern broke up after a huge argument one moon into living at their new home. They were just not good together. Branch Deer tried his best to make things work, but he couldn't take it. Hope Fern snapped at him for anything, and he was done with this. He did his best after that, offering to lead border patrols, going on hunting patrols with his son Jump Spark, stopping Sleek Clove from being reckless when he showed the Tom a flattened squirrel in the Thunder Path. Seriously, Sleek Clove, please be more careful. Branch Deer's shoulder was scarred from when he saved Yarrow Patch from the Eagle, and later in the year, he stepped on a two leg trap while he was distracted. It was after the incident that that happened. The moon before Lightning Flight was murdered, he had watched the sunset with her, something that I guess pushed Hope Fern over the edge. He blames himself a bit for what happened, and he really shouldn't, and I hope that he can heal from this. And I wish there could have been a future where things were different and both him and Lightning Flight could heal from their past relationships and have a healing moving on together where they might have become mates later. Oh well. Next up is the 42 moon old Pansy Bloom and she sure exists. So she's still been goofing off and being irresponsible this year, playing tricks, making up songs, climbing like always, and that would be charming, but we'll get to it later. Interesting fact from the Viper Clan playthrough, the moon before the war started and possibly the reason it was started in the first place was a Viper Clan cat was hurt after following Galaxy Clan sent to a cat in a tree that apparently watched as a dog hurt the Viper Clan cat. I am leaning towards that being Pansy Bloom. Whether it was on purpose or on accident, who knows, but this girl might have accidentally started a war. She thought Holostar could be leading the clan better this year, but that man gave her an apprentice and Pansy has been irresponsible with them. That apprentice almost drowned and had to save her mentor when Pansy Bloom ended up buried on a patrol. Holostar being there and helping her, mind you, I don't know what her deal with Holostar is. She also had the status that she apparently broke the warrior code, so who knows what she got up to there. If you have any ideas, let me know. I appreciate Silly most of the time, but Pansy Bloom kind of needs to shape up, and she's she's kind of annoying me, honestly. (laughs) Moving on to her brother. Truffle Sprout was really upset at his mother's death, but the clan's kits distracted him. He was roped into playing Moss Ball with them multiple times, putting his beloved kit sitter treat to use. Honestly, I can see Truffle Sprout being a permanent den dad in the future if he wants to be, whether with his own kits or just the clans in general. I also sent him on a couple patrols of Condor Breeze, and while nothing extreme happened, he does have a small crush back on him now, which is cute. Towards the end of the year, his nerves were getting to him, and he hoped that he made it through Leaf Bear. Considering a cat was dying every moon during Leaf Bear, I don't blame him for that. Also, I wrote in my notes that someone tried to breathe deeply to no avail, but there's no name next to it, so I can only assume that that was Truffle Sprout or his brother Wormshade, as they are both very nervous boys. 
Wormshade honestly had a great year, again, ignoring the fact that his mom died, which rightfully made him sad. He led a patrol that chased a dog away and helped the medicine cats with herbs. He also took control of a patrol to help Condor Breeze while training his apprentice. Truffle Sprout was there too. Condor Breeze has a nervous apprentice and Wormshade could relate. I did notice that Wormshade had a very small romantic like towards Condor Breeze, so we'll have to see if that grows to the point where there might be possible drama between the brothers. It's a little tiny slither, so I don't think it's gonna do anything, but we'll see. Honestly, I'm just kind of proud of Wormshade for honestly being pretty good at most things he's done. On to a returning face. Hey there, Snip Cloud. He's 38 moons old, and I was doing some behind the scenes stuff regarding his statuses while he was exiled. And basically, we figured out that Freckle Spot told him to lie and tell the clan that he rejects her influence because. He's more useful when he's in the clan. She's been a bit off-putting with how fiercely she kind of demanded him, but Snipcloud is sure that she still has his best interest. He is wavering a little bit, though. But at this point, he just, he has to be right. He can't admit defeat. I actually coded him back into the clan a moon before this happened, but lore-wise, I like this better, so... On technically Snipcloud's second patrol back, he saved Orange Paw from drowning, and canon-wise, I'm saying that's when he showed back up in general. Pansy Bloom took him back to camp to the shock and anger of a few cats, but but after hearing that he saved Orange Paw and Snipcloud sweared that he regretted his actions, Holosar hesitantly led him back into the clan, which might have been a mistake considering he almost chased a rabbit across the Moss Clan border with Goldpaw having to pull him back. He's been daydreaming about slaughtering every cat he despises, eavesdropping on Holostar, and thinking about how easy it would be to kill Holostar. I am afraid. On a more positive note, Snipcloud found an abandoned kit playing in a puddle, bringing him back to clan. And on the note of kits... On the very last moon of this year, Snipcloud slinked through the territory at night, watching the Viper Clan border, until a she cat came out with free kits. Sil Valley of Viper Clan has free half clan kits in origin, and all the clues point to Snipcloud being the father, especially since the only girl in the litter is named Freckle Kit. Um, I won't go into details about these kits or Sil Valley, so if you're more interested, you can check out the Viper Clan streams. But yeah, just know that Snipcloud has half clan kits right now. He also had the status that he was regretting his actions on the last moon of the year, so I'm wondering if that's with Freckle Spot or if that's with Sil Valley in the kits. We'll have to see where that goes. Looking at Lizard Snap, she is so mad her brother is back. She sees right through him and doesn't believe anything he says, gossiping with Beetlebite about their mutual dislike of him. She's trying not to let her brother get to her current happy life and has threatened that if anything does, she will come for him personally. On the happy side of things, Lizard Snap is so cute with Stone Fawn, she was pranking her at one point, which I imagine was harmless, but the image of this usually serious cat pulling a prank is kind of cute to me. She was also sunbathing with her, and she felt really lucky to have such a kind cat as her mate when she saw that Stonefawn was finding the best piece of prey to go give the elders. At that point, Cinderpetal was still alive. Lizard Snap is so happy that they all have kits, and I imagine that she told Holostar that under no circumstances was Snipcloud allowed to mentor them. Speaking of, Lizard Snap took over mentoring Lightning Flight's apprentice, who honestly is a handful, and Lizard is seeing concerning signs that are kind of freaking her out a bit, but next up. Yarrow Patch is now 38 moons old, and she's relatively pretty good. She was so happy to see her brother come back thanking Star Clan. She feels really bad that she got Branch Deer hurt saving her on the journey, but she's really thankful. She also completely approves of her dad getting together with Ragged, and she has a lot of platonic love for the cat. I mean, he did save her from a fox. Patch is also extremely loyal and respectful to those in power. She was suspicious of a clanmate who questioned the leader, which I think was Pansy Bloom that moon, based on the timeline. And she also listens to the deputy intently a lot, which is really cute to me considering that's her dad. I'd honestly love to see Patch be a future deputy herself, but she needs an apprentice first for that to even be in the running. So I'm hoping she might get one of the kits. As for her returning brother... He was named Stag Chaser after the clan made it to their new home. And he's a bit on the nervous side, but he's also an unusually strong fighter. He should go hang out with Wormshade more. I think they get along. While he stumbled over his words, never quite able to get things right, I feel that by the way, he has really proved his strength and growth. 
On two separate occasions, he succeeded in attacking and catching a juvenile eagle, as well as their large fish that they had caught. Which is so amazing to me, looking back at his first day out as an apprentice, where he failed to catch a bird. Look at the growth. We love to see it. He's done such a good job providing for the clan, and I'm really happy he's back. Moving on to Condor Breeze, who is now 33 moons old. He's also been doing pretty good. He had a chat with Beetle Bite about what it's like to be a medicine cat and went on a few patrols with his crush, Truffle Sprout. He did at one point almost chase a rabbit across the Moss Clan border, but he tripped before he could. Realizing what he almost did and thinking it's for the best that he tripped and no one, and no one saw him. He also chased a rogue off the territory twice this year and he got an apprentice. He's a bit more of an intense mentor, but I think he's really what his apprentice needed. He's also been wanting to spend time with Branch Deer now that Hope Fern's not an issue, but he feels awkward trying to reconnect at this point. He still respects him a lot, though. Next up is the 25 moon old Jump Spark, and he's stressed with everything going on with his parents. He's mostly just been hunting and trying to silently fulfill his duties, seemingly without trying to draw attention to himself. On a solo patrol, he did help a lost J-Clan apprentice, though, which was really nice of him. Jumpspark has always had a really strong Star Clan connection and had a few statuses about where he mentioned with his sign language that he had visions. And I think he's the most aware of the spirits that are around them in their home, catching glimpses of both cats he knows and cats he doesn't in the crystals. But yeah, he hasn't really done too much this year. He's mostly just existing and trying not to be sad, I think. Now on to some of the new warriors, starting with the 14 moon old Shameless Gold Dazzle, who is a renowned hunter. I love this girl. As a kit, she helped clean out the nursery, and when she was apprenticed to Sleek Clove, she admitted that her dreams were filled with shadows and images. Sleek Clove offered comfort and said everything was going to be okay. He's not sure if this means that the forces of the Dark Forest are still here and they're coming for her, or if she's just having nightmares, but he's kind of kept it between them in case this starts an unnecessary panic, but he has encouraged her that he's here to listen to her. She actually had this status twice this year. Then Goldpaw almost drowned, but Sleek Clove saved her. That in particular was probably extremely re-traumatizing considering her siblings died in a flood. She later went to check a badger den and only escaped by the grace of Star Clan, so she had a pretty rough apprenticeship. She did, however, also take on the lion's share of chasing out a large dog, so I think Sleek Clove's carefree nature did help her relax a little bit and helped her end up being shameless. She also found and decided to wear a maple leaf, which I think is really pretty on her. Unfortunately, she has a lot of guilt right now because Flip Dusk is dead because she was protecting her. But I'm rooting for her to have a better year next time. And our youngest warrior is the 12 moon old loving Fuzzy Flake, who is an excellent teacher. And he's the only one of his litter to be made a warrior so far. Also, side note, I coded him in on a base cat in Clan Gen when starting, and I was kind of surprised to see that he had long hair. I didn't notice, but we roll with it. He poofed out a lot as he got bigger. He was playful when he was apprenticed to Rain Dapple, and he saw a loner on his first patrol. Side note, Rain Dapple always sees loners on their first patrol with their apprentices. I'm so sad that he's dead. He also might have accidentally annoyed Rain Dapple with his silly nature, but he really respected his mentor. And he was horrified to see her die to a monster, especially after knowing his mom's accident and the fact that she had been murdered a moon before that. He was made a warrior the next moon at 11 moons old, and Fernhart had apparently finished his training. Though it was only for a very short time, so I think he was pretty much done when that happened. Now to see his siblings in the apprentice den. Starting with the bloodthirsty, restless sleeper Osprey Paw, who is so annoyed and bitter that she's still an apprentice. She was apprenticed to her mom, and she dug her claws into the ground during her ceremony, upset that Prickleflex couldn't be there. She's always been quick to run towards a fight. On her very first patrol, she actually ran off at the sound of a cat to go attack them eventually returning to her slightly amused yet annoyed mom who is waiting to explain that Tohi birds can imitate cat sounds. Osprey Paw was also hissing defiantly at Fernheart, and she's honestly kind of concerning. After her mom was killed, Lizard Snap took over her training, and her mentor is really upset at the similarities that she's seeing with Snip Cloud in her. And overall, Osprey is just upset that she's still an apprentice. Next up is the Righteous Springpaw, who is a mossball hunter. He was a nervous apprentice at first, but with the encouragement of his mentor Condor Breeze, he's become a bit more confident, which I love to see. On his first patrol, Condor Breeze made sure that the coast was clear and then had Springpaw cross a thunder path, having him face fears head-on from the horror stories that he heard from his mom. 
Condor Breeze really pushes him, but not in a mean way. Everything is always in the goal of making Springpaw less afraid of the world, and the face challenges head on no matter what happens. And I think it's good for him. Also, Springpaw is wearing rye stocks that he decided to wear when he and his sister Ospreypaw were changing the elder's bedding, and Ospreypaw kept complaining about the rye stocks underneath her paws. And he got an idea from that, and I think that is petty, and it's also hilarious to me. Very true sibling energy. And last in the litter is Orange Paw, who is cunning, confident with words, and oddly insightful. As a kit, she tried to purr her way out of trouble with the medicine cat, and later caught an insect wearing its wings. Part of me wonders if she was the one who dared Sleek Clove to eat a bug. She started off rebellious when she was an apprentice to Pansy Bloom. And small blood warning, together they found the injured Flip Dusk on their first patrol. I think Orange Paw might have become less rebellious after the drowning incident. She had been nervous for an assessment that day, and she's really grateful that this mystery cat saved her. I don't think Orange Paw respects Pansy Bloom that much, honestly, and she feels a bit like Pansy Bloom wouldn't risk herself for anyone, including her, which kind of scares her a bit. But now it's time for the Elders Den, where the 137 moon old Meringue is now the only resident. He's been giving a lot this year. He gave Lightning Flight advice, gave Hill Fuzz feathers, and gave Hollow Star attitude. <laughs> Truly a generous cat. <laughs> Side note, I think Meringue just likes things that are a reddish color, considering that he has a red bow, the petals that he gave Snake Paw at the time were red, and the feathers that he gave Hill Fuzz are also red. Very fun. Meringue was watching teary-eyed at Gold Dazzle's warrior ceremony. So very proud of his daughter. He's mostly just resting in between his mini heart attacks every time he hears that his daughter came close to danger. So for now, it's nursery time. Meet Guppy Kit! He's five moons old, polite, and just about to become an apprentice. He also had the skill Splashes and Puddles, which is so fitting with his name being a fish. Snip Cloud found him, and I think he was freshly abandoned, not fully understanding what was wrong. That being said, Guppy Kit's another raised by the entire clan with no real parent situation. Completely new blood. Guppy Kit was also the kit that Snake Eye was teaching about what herbs to stay away from, and on that same moon, his status was that he always says please and thank you, which is just so cute. I love him. Most of the clan also really likes him, and I see why. He's just precious. But moving on. The 38 moon old Stone Fawn is in the nursery with her one moon old kits. I basically said everything about Stone Fawn this year during her partner's sections, but she's just been a sweetheart, like I said, giving the best priest of prey to the elders, bonding with her mates on their little separate patrols. I like switching up who she goes out on patrol with each moon. But onto the kits. There's her son, the bullying ghost kit, who's curious about Star Clan, and he was renamed via community post. Originally, he was named Dark Kit, and while the idea of Beetle Bite naming a kit after his adopted dad was adorable, I didn't want to double the name in the clan. So I kept it canon that he did want to name him Dark Kit, but Dark Whistle convinced him to reconsider and to give him a more unique name since Dark Whistle has seen how bad legacy kit names can end up being, especially in his family. And I think Beetle Bite really has a positive association with spirits and such, being a medicine cat and his whole situation with Swanleaf. So I really like the name Ghost Kit. That being said, he's trying to teach his son not to bully his brother, seeing a lot of similarities with his siblings in general. Cavern Kit is a quick-witted but nervous baby who jumped at his own shadow and I love him. And last in the litter is the only girl, Echo Kit, who is fittingly noisy and interested in clan history. She's also the closest with Lizard Snap, which is fun. But again, these kits are one moon old, so there's not really too much to them. All of these kits do have white patches that I don't think we've ever seen in the clan, which is really cool. But yeah, I'm excited that the Polycule has kits, and now onto the elephant in the clan. Hi, Hope Fern! She's 58 moons old, and she actually became insecure again, and honestly... That's been her personality this whole time. She was furious at the breakup and made the situation of Viper Clan worse. She couldn't control her jealousy and pushed Lightning Flight off a cliff when she had the chance. She's been having a lot of regretful statuses, but it's too late to take these things back, Hope Fern. Hollow Star slashed her face in punishment and sentenced her to an imprisonment of, sores, of sorts. She's exiled in game, but Hollow Star did not think it would be fair to exile a declawed cat in the mountains. So she lives in a cave far off from the main clan, with two cats that guard her at all times, at least for now. And with that, that's everyone in the clan. Real quick, let's take a look at all the positions of power in the other clans. 
The leaders are currently Hollow Star, the ambitious Frosty Star who leads Moss Clan, a clan who wears bioluminescent moss to be seen by their ancestors, and also has a lot of drama with Viper Clan, something that Galaxy Clan relates to, the grumpy tiny star who leads J Clan, a proud clan who believes that birds are their loved ones visiting from Star Clan. They've had the least interaction with Galaxy Clan, and some cats wonder if it's because Sherb never made it back here. And then there's the confident Serpent Star who leads Viper Clan and is Ragged's older brother. In game, he's the second leader of Viper Clan, but lore wise, Viper Clan's been going on before we started the game. And he's the snake leading the war, and no one in Galaxy Clan likes him. Viper Clan cats live in the territory with two leg trash, and they have strong connections to the Dark Forest. On to the deputies we have Cloud Jane, Galaxy Clan. The wise old she-cat small strike of Moss Clan who refuses to retire and I love that for her. The ambitious single dad Blue Blossom of J-Clan who became deputy early this year after the previous one was actually murdered. And then the childish Bay Timber of Viper Clan who is honestly a really nice cat all things considered. On to the med cats. We got our boys in Galaxy Clan and then we have the compassionate Elm Shade. As the only medicine cat of Moss Clan for at least the past three years, please get an apprentice next year, you're almost elder age. J Clan has the adventurous older Algae Heart, who stepped up in a time when J Clan lost their one medicine cat, along with the younger righteous Garlic Spirit, who has ghost sight and a girlfriend, we'd love to see it. The medicine cats are very, hmm, if you know what I mean. Lastly, with Viper Clan. They have the compassionate older cat, Grey Egg, who also has a girlfriend, see what I mean? And then the cold Burrow Dusk, who was a loner before, and also the cold Porsche Field, who was also a loner before, but I think he was a kitty pet who's lying about his old past, but you know. In general, if you're curious about these side clans, I have a stream playlist of them, and I plan to stream another year of each clan, hopefully around one week after the videos will go up for the Galaxy Clan years. I know it's a lot to get through. Personally, I like rewatch the streams on like 1.5 speed to double check stuff sometimes. And I don't really plan on making full on videos about them due to the time. But with that said, that's year 15. Honestly, despite all the murder and the literal war, could have been a lot worse. And I'm pleasantly surprised at the deaths being in the single digits, which shouldn't be an accomplishment, but you know Clan Gen. Clan Gen's been really, really hard on us. I'm excited to read the comments regarding some of these details. There's a lot of clan drama going on, and I'm hopeful for some cats to have a better year next time. Also, regarding possible deaths of certain cats in the clan, I'm curious about what you guys think about the whole Star Clan versus Dark Forest Afterlife situation. Hope you liked the travel animatic, as well as the section saying goodbye to Cinderpetal. Let me know if it got you in the feelings, because I was having emotions. I thought we really needed a proper goodbye losing our last clan founder. Flame Bear and Sleek Clove are expecting a litter with a surrogate's help. Snip Cloud's back and he has half clan kits with a cat in the clan that we are at war with. Ragged might be suspicious. Hope Fern straight up murdered. Just a lot of drama going on in general. I'm looking forward to the next year. But yeah, that's year 15. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I should see you next month with year 16. And thank you so much for watching these. I really appreciate if you could like, comment, and subscribe. As well as checking out the socials linked below. There's a lot of links below, including the Galaxy Clan playlist, the family tree, the Discord, my Instagram, etc. My commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Peace.